All right, we're going to be talking about the mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. Mean value theorem, uh, we've taught, we've addressed this concept. It is one of the biggies in uh, in calculus. And uh, what you need for uh, the mean value theorem is a function that is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So meaning it's both continuous and differentiable between A and B, and that the endpoints also exist. It's not like a horizontal asymptote or a hole or anything like that. And so what you get is the derivative, there's some point C between A and B, where the derivative of that point is equal to the average rate of change. Uh, so the F prime of C is equal to F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. And so C is just uh, some sort of X value in between A and B. So verbally, we're talking about when is the instantaneous rate of change, that's F prime of C, equal to our average rate of change, that's our old school slope. And then graphically, what it looks like is if I have a tangent line, so I have a, here's the x-coordinates. Uh, let me make that a little bit smaller. and I have some sort of curve and here is A and here is B that the slope of my secant line which is this thing right here remember secant line hits it twice there exists some sort of C between them here's C that if I find the tangent line at that point that my secant line and my tangent line are parallel they have the same slope. A special subset of mean value theorem is Rolle's theorem. And so what you need is you need to be able to have the same thing as mean value theorem, a function that's continuous on the closed, differentiable in the open, and the y value at the endpoints have to be equal. They have to be the same. So what we're so this graph would look something like maybe like a parabola. And so it's coming around and it comes back down. And so notice that my y coordinates, my little dots here, are going to be at the same height. That's what uh, Rolls tells us. And so uh, what happens is if we have the same y coordinates at the beginning and the end, then there exists a maximum. That's f prime of c is equal to zero. That means there's a horizontal tangent line somewhere where I have a maximum or a minimum. All right, number one, let f be the function given by f of x is equal to x to the third minus 7x plus 6. Find the number c such that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem for f on 1 to 3. And so the mean value theorem states that um, as long as it's continuous on the closed interval, so it's a polynomial, so it's continuous, and also that it is differentiable on the open interval, so the open interval will be from 1 to 3. Well, all polynomials, there's no... Um, holes or jumps or gaps or anything like that so we don't have to worry about um, or cusps, so we don't have to worry about differentiability and so what they're saying is where is my f prime of c equal to my old school slope so let's first find our old school slope and so uh, my x1 is 1 and so if I plug that in my y1 is going to be I think 0 my x2 is 3 my y2 is going to be 12. I plug 3 into the original equation. And so m is going to be uh, 12 minus 0, which is 12, over 3 minus 1, which is 2. So we're talking about 6. And so next thing I need to do is take my derivative. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 7. And I'm going to set that equal to my uh, old school slope, this guy right here. And so I have 6 is equal to 3x squared minus 7. And uh, I'm just going to add 7 to both sides. And so I have 13 is equal to 3x squared. Divide both sides by 3. So x squared is equal to 13 over 3. And then finally, in order to get rid of the squared, I need to take the square root of both sides. And so uh, my c that they're looking for, c is going to be plus or minus 
and we'll just leave it as a square root. We don't need to simplify. We'll do 13 over 3. All right, number two, let f be a function that is differentiable, and also that f double prime of x is greater than zero, so that means we're talking about a positive number. Using the chart below, find a positive number r, that's where this positive comes from, this positive number r, having the property there must be exist a value c, that's some sort of x-coordinate, where c is between zero and 0.5, so we're looking between these x-coordinates, and that um, f double prime, so we're looking at the second derivative of c is equal to that positive value of r, and then give reason for your answer. So we're not really we're not going to really deal with f of x because we're we're talking about the second derivative. So we kind of we don't need to worry about these guys. We're looking at um, second derivative means we have to look at the first derivative and find the slope. So we're going to find um, so my x one is equal to zero. That means my y one is going to be or uh, is going to be that f prime of zero, which is zero. My x two is 0.5, so my y2, which is f prime of 0.5, is equal to 3. And so my m is going to be f prime of 0.5 minus f prime of 0, divided by 0.5 minus 0. Well, f of 0 0.5, so that's our 3, so 3 minus 0 divided by 0 0.5 is equal to 3 over 0 0.5, which is 6. So that's, that's our r. That's our positive value r. And so they want us to give us reason for the answer. So uh, by the mean value theorem, since we're talking about continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on an open interval, uh, there must there must be a c such that that's at st st means such that f double prime of c is equal to that f prime of 0.5 minus f prime I'm running out of room of zero divide by 0.5 minus 0. All right, next one, uh, we're going to use our calculator. Let f be the function defined by f of x is equal to x plus ln x. What is the value of c for which the instantaneous rate of change of f is at x equals c is the same as the average rate of change of f over 1 to 4? So let's go over to our function. Let's go ahead and put in uh, x plus ln x. And I'm going to quit. And then uh, I'm going to uh, go to vars, y vars, and I'm going to go ahead and find my um, slope. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y vars, here's my y1. I'm going to y2, I'm going to plug in 4. I'm going to go ahead and subtract. This is my numerator. So I'm going to subtract my, um, that's my y. First I have y1 of 4, that's my y2. Go back to vars, y vars my uh, y1 is 1 and so this is a numerator for that's the numerator for my um, slope function my uh, rise over run and so now I need to divide, divide it by x2 minus x1 well 4 minus 1 is 3 so we're going to divide by 3 and so we get 1.462 blah 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 well if my slope my m is equal to 1.462, etc. I'm going to set that equal to the derivative. Well, the derivative is going to be 1 plus oh, um, 1 over x. So derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. And so uh, the next thing I want to do in my calculator is I want to be able to subtract 1 from both sides. And so then I get 0 0.462, blah, 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 is equal to 1 over x. And then I can use the inverse function, meaning I'm going to just take the reciprocal. And so I'll show you how to use that in the calculator. So, and then we'll find, finally find our C. So uh, let me erase this so I can get back to my calculator. All right, first thing we do, again, we're going to subtract that 1. 
And then next we're going to use the inverse function. It's right under our the reciprocal function. It's underneath the math. And so we're going to hit the reciprocal. And so there's our answer. That is our C. And so our C is going to be 2.164. Number four, determine if Rolle's theorem applies. If so, find C. If not, tell Y. Again, Rolle's theorem states that if I plug in my X coordinates, so if I have uh, X of 1, which is negative 2, if I plug in and find the Y coordinate, is that the same um, as if I plug in my X2 and find that Y coordinate? Well, if you plug in negative 2 and 2, you're going to get 8. And if you plot, so um, in this case, because my y coordinates are the same, I can use Rolle's theorem. So again, Rolle says that if my y coordinates are the same, that there is some sort of c that creates a maximum or a minimum. So we're going to find there's going to be a c where the derivative is equal to zero. So in order to find that c, let's find f prime of x. It's going to be 4x to the third minus 4x, and we're going to set that equal to zero. And I'm going to factor out a 4x, so that leaves me with x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So I have 4x is equal to 0, and I have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, 4x, uh, if I divide by both sides by 4, I get x is equal to 0. That's one of my c's. And I can add 1 to both sides, and I get x is equal to plus or minus 1. Those are my other um, c's. And so these are the value of C with rolls that make our derivative equal to zero. So these are potential where we might have maximums or minimums. All right, number five, let F be a function that's differentiable in the interval from one to 10. If F of two is negative five, so I kind of already set up a grid here. So F of two is negative five, so I'm gonna put a dot there f of 5 is 5, so f of 5 is 5, so I have the point 5, 5, and then I have the point 9, negative 5. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of connect my dots here. There we go. Which of the following must be true? f has at least two zeros. Well, I believe that, because you can, off my rough sketch, you can see I have a zero right here and a zero right there. So I believe that f has at least two zeros. I go from a negative y value to a positive y value back down to a negative y value, so f has to have at least two zeros. That is true. Uh, B, the graph of f has at least one horizontal tangent line. Well, you can look from the graph that we have a maximum, so you know that just from the graph that there's probably going to be a horizontal tangent line right there. Also, we talked about with um, Rolle's theorem that if I have, to remember if I have two y coordinates that are the same, negative 5 and negative 5, that means somewhere between those two, I'm going to have a horizontal tangent line where the derivative is equal to zero. And so B, um, either using rolls or you can use the picture, B is also true. Part C, for some C between 2 and 5, then F of C is equal to 3. That means uh, uh, my slope is going to be 3. Well, let's check. So my Y2 is 5. My y1 is negative 5, so I'm going to go ahead and put plus 5, over my x2, which is 5, and my x1, which is 2. And so I'm getting essentially 10 over 3. Well, that's not equal to 3. And so c is not true.